Appetito, for example, is one of the companies that use the developed solution. They do group catering, they have food solutions, maybe you've ordered something uh, from them already. That's what they do for their employees. They use the digital payslip. If you would like to know how that works, if you would like to know more about the project, well, stay tuned. This is the last presentation before we break for lunch. So, a warm welcome to the next speaker. Thorsten Schmalbrock, a warm welcome to the Development Forum 2021. Right. Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the kind introduction. It's wonderful. It's great to be here in Gesha. The stage has been rearranged. Uh, I was successful in, within three minutes only to tear down the wall. I did that. <laughs> now there's uh, vegetables here, pots and pans, because that's exactly our core business at Appetito. We offer healthy, great food. My name is Thorsten Schmalbrock. I work uh, for the HR department. And it is my pleasure today to tell you how we at Appetito send digital documents for salary statements to our employees. Yes, payslip, that's one thing. But apart from that, there are, of course, numerous other documents from the HR department department that our uh, employees need to receive. So let me take you on a journey. This is the agenda for today's presentation. Of course, I will introduce the company and advertise the company. Who are we? Some of you might have never heard of Appetito. Let's change that over the next few minutes. Then I will speak about the challenges when uh, you use analogous processes. From our point of view, where are the problems and challenges of the first year and a half, together with DEVELOP, we looked into digital solutions, a digital postbox, mailbox. What does that mean? We became partners, we became friends, and for the past year, we've worked with Fox Docs. It's the postbox, as it's called uh, and nowadays. And at the end, I will also give you a brief forecast. Um, let's see what's ahead. Let's see what's still in store for us. Appetito. We are based in Rheine in Westphalia, Germany. So together with DEVELOP, we're from the same region. We are a medium-sized company in the classical sense. The group uh, has more than 11,000 employees. And two years ago, we broke through the 1 billion turnover barrier. It is a major group. However, it splits up into production. This is where all of the food is produced. And then um, the sales and marketing business. And we also have a sister company with lots of employees, decentrally organized Appetito Catering it's called. And they provide food for cafeterias, for uh, groups, the contract catering, basically. So we have, we cater to four markets where we deliver our food, our solutions. So daycare centers and schools. You will be familiar with the fact that more and more kids eat at school or in daycare, something that we never experienced when we were kids, but it's growing. It's a growing segment. Then the second market is the care market, as we call it. So hospital cafeterias, uh, nursery homes, etc., etc. This is a major market. Thirdly, cafeterias and canteens in companies. Any company who would like to offer lunch or, in general, food to their staff but don't want to do, the, do it themselves, we come in here. And the fourth market that has grown mostly over the past 18 months is the classical Meals on Wheels. It's called differently nowadays. We cater for senior 
citizens. We provide them with a warm lunch, with a hot lunch. And that is an overview of the four markets that we cater for. Now, which are the challenges that we face when undergoing a process in an analog way? I look uh, When I look around here, mm, it's a high-tech studio here. We all have our smartphones, we all have our devices, but there was a time before, before that. There was a time when we used typewriters. There was a time when salary statements were written pen on paper. What are the disadvantages of these processes? They are not efficient. They are expensive. At least from today's point of view, they're not efficient because now we know what's possible. Then data protection, privacy. That's always an issue if we have a box with envelopes, um, names of the employees uh, written on them. Uh, someone could steal your payslip and then serve Service level, that is uh, another problem. If you uh, have a sheet of paper that you need to send out or, or give to the employee, that's a process, another step. Of course, you need CO2 to send a letter, to send a document to someone. All of those factors are disadvantages and are simply not up to date anymore. If we look at HR documents or HR files, in HR you have a high degree of data privacy. It's the most sensitive area in any company, I dare say. From the point of view of your employees, if I think about my salary statements, if we were live at my company, um, I would ask, if, if there was an audience, I would ask, ask you, who of you still has a box with paper, with your pay slips of the past years, where you collected them? And I, my guess would be that most of you put them in a, fa in a file once, these sheets of paper, and then forget about them. Depending on where you are, where you work, your salary statement um, might not just be given out manually to the employees. Um, if the employees Employees are somewhere based somewhere else. You might have to send them by mail. Safety issues there. And some of you might know this uh, from the past. There are in boxes, brick and mortar in boxes, and you put an envelope in there. Uh, but the person might be on vacation for two weeks, and then for two weeks, the letter with the pay slip is lying there in the inbox or on the desk physically. So we said we need to change this. We, need, we said we need to improve processes. And we also must look at all of those other factors I've just mentioned in order to improve them or avoid them altogether. And this is why we looked into the processes and thought about digitalizing the documents from HR. So, the example of the salary statement. Before we introduced this process, what's the way that a pay statement would take? It is created, it is sent to a printer, printed. There is a room where the printers are, so either somebody sits right next to the printer and waits and takes care that nobody steals a pay slip, or you close close it, you lock it, then you have to uh, sort through them, categorize them, you have to put them in envelopes. Yes, there are machines for that, but you need an operator for that machine. And then, one way or the other, you distribute the pay slips, either via the in-house mail service or now that so many people are working from home, you put them in the mail and send them by snail mail. The employee empties his or her letterbox, takes out the envelope. Many people don't even open the envelopes anymore because what's important is what ends up on your bank account and then they file it and archive it in their basements or in the attic. And this is a process we wanted to get rid of. From the HR point 
point of view, but also from the employee, employee's point of view, we wanted to change that. So we sat down and said, which parts of the process chain could I replace or get rid of if I wanted to change the whole system to a digital system? And as you can see, it's a simple math example. We had six steps and now we're down to two. Putting them into envelopes, uh, printing them out in the first place, filing them, all of that is not necessary anymore. And so many of these steps that we saw at, as challenges or disadvantages in the past are now discontinued. Of course, we had to have a definition at first. We needed to define what we, what our aim was. So requirements to such an inbox for the employees. What, what did we want it to look like? So let me uh, deviate a little bit and say, and speak a little bit about our situation. We have our headquarters in Rheine. However, Appetito is very decentralized. We have a number of logistics centers or service centers not only all over Germany, but abroad as well, where we produce the food that is then delivered to the client. So the major share of our employees is not even based in Rheine, but all over Germany, basically. The second fact is that a high number of our uh, employees are in the office, but now they're working from home. Then we have employees that work in the warehouse at minus 20 degrees and fill the boxes. They don't have an office. They sometimes don't even have an account um, uh, where we could send the payslip to. No, we wanted a solution that would uh, cater to the needs of everyone. Of course, then we wanted something uh, that complies with privacy concerns, uh, data privacy regulations. At, uh, with DEVELOP, we were quickly able to find a solution that corresponds to that. And we wanted the implementation effort to be in line. I'm not saying we were lazy, but I'm just saying we did not want to make a major investment and then invest in hardware and then uh, invest more and more. We said today most of the things are in the cloud anyway, so we wanted this to be a small investment of time. We also wanted a system that our employees are able to use uh, privately as well for their private purposes, because for a while now, we've been trying to archive, to digitize our private documents as well. What happens if you go abroad on vacation and then you lose the card from your health insurance company or you lose your uh, passport? If I go to the Fox Docs and log onto my account, I have my documents there. I moved all of uh, these documents that I've just mentioned into my private FoxDocs account and the cloud uh, complies with the German GDPR regulations, of course. So, even before we took the decision in favor of DEVELOP, these were the requirements we wanted to be met. We talked to several providers and things became more specific. Then we started to uh, develop the project steps could you please move away this little uh, table there? This, uh, thank you. Because I have difficulties uh, seeing my own slides there. I need to be able to see where I'm at. Thank you. So we started with the legal assessment, because that's quite important not to be underestimated. Now you have an op you say, I have a new system, I have the option to send the documents digitally. It's not as easy as that. Yes, in Germany we have a high degree of uh, privacy regulations. However, legal requirements um, are sometimes very, very strict. What are we allowed to send out digitally and what do we still need to send out in paper? Now, our lawyers helped us in uh, putting the documents that we're dealing with in categories. We went through the list bit by bit. 
and we're able to check off most of the types of document. Some documents will still need to be handed over or issued or sent in the original form on paper, but we still have them also digitally. For each document that you send via Foxdoc has its own ID, so you're on the safe side. Even if there was a legal dispute, you could say, here's the ID, I sent this document XYZ to this person on that date, you, and, and you would be able to trace it. Then we put together the specifications for us. We wrote down all of the requirements we had to such a new system based on that we chose the first range of providers that we then met for talks. Most of the individual items on the list of specifications have already been mentioned. And then we looked around, we uh, set uh, dates or appointments for uh, demonstrations. It's easy nowadays. You uh, just book a presentation online, digitally, and uh, you meet with the different providers. Then we did the math. It's an investment case, of course, and um, it is an investment, so the volume was important. I'll come back to that in a minute, and then we took a decision at the end of this process where we decided in favor of the Fox stocks from develop. And in hindsight, one year later, I can say that was the best decision. It was perfect. So if you're interested, the contact data, I'm sure, is available everywhere. So feel free to approach me after this event, after the presentation, and I might be able to share some more tips with you. Let's talk about the business case. What what did we do? Be, the year before, just for pay statements, we had costs amounting to 26,000 euros, roughly. And that doesn't even entail the staff, the HR employees, it's just the printing, the envelopes, the toner, the paper. Then we looked at uh, the percentage rate. Uh, of snail mail pay statements that were sent out, so we had to pay um, the stamps, etc., etc. This is how we came uh, how we came to the number of 26,000. And then we said, okay, Fox stocks, what would that mean in terms of euros? I have to add, we introduced it at first for a part of the Appetito company, just 3,000 employees. That was our starting point. <laughs> <laughs> we, I want to avoid a situation where you approach develop and say, for 11,000 employees, I would like to have Fox Dogs at this price. No, 3,000 employees was our uh, first test. 14,000 costs, 14,000 euros. Uh, so we had savings to the tune of 12,000. We had a one-off payment, 1,500 euros. That was a, a, a lump sum investment for the server, the hardware. Uh, we talked to the developed colleagues, to our partners. We had several brainstorming meetings, etc. So we had to make this investment once and then the amortization time less than half a year, less than six months. My boss always said it's a no-brainer. Of course, go ahead and do it. So these are all the figures that you need. Apart from all of that, apart from these hard facts, hard costs, we also realized that we had savings to the tune of 350 hours per year, freeing capacity in mainly HR, IT and in our mailroom because there's less work to be done, uh, less paper to be put into the printer, less time that is necessary for all those things. And part of the lean management that Appetito pursues this is such a wonderful side effect of this business case. 
And at the end of the day, that is the solid proof of the fact that introducing a digital inbox for our employees is necessary and is a good thing to do simply because we didn't run into any problems at any stage. Usually, when you're a president, you have the 100 days rule, so after 100 days, uh, your performance gets assessed. Now at Appetito, it's not 100 days, it's uh, about a year that we have been working with Fox Docs now. So it's the one year assessment here. The user quote is roughly 50% at Appetito. So roughly 50% of our employees that we offered to use Fox Docs to decided in favor of using it. And now you might say, wow, 50%? That's not so much, is it? Why didn't you just tell them to do it, tell everyone to do it? Well, it's not that easy. You can't just tell people, we will switch to a new system, regardless of what you want. Now, of course, you have to talk to the Works Council. That's important. And right from the get-go, we involved co-determination. So if you have co-determination in your company, if you have a Works Council, uh, get the employee representatives on board and talk to them. We um, made it voluntary and we advertised it. So currently 50% of people are using it. What are the benefits? In particular, during these past 18 months, uh, during the past year of the pandemic, where many people work from home and were not even present at our headquarters in Rheine. We had to get the documents to the people quickly. Just to give you another example, usually on Fridays the government would issue a new decision, new regulations um, as far as restrictions were concerned, etc. So usually that was announced on Fridays and it wasn't announced for Germany as a whole, but each federal state did it in their own uh, speed and in their own way. Then the legal basis was changed, the Act, uh, Infection Protection Act, but it was changed on Friday, or the, the decision was announced on Friday, but on Monday our drivers had to load the trucks and go to visit the clients. So for us that was the one of the major benefits because we were able to inform a major share of our decentralized employees because we didn't rely on snail mail. In particular, in the federal states of southern Germany, the delivery uh, people were uh, stopped by the police. Um, uh, inspe um, there were controls, uh, roadblocks, but they were able to take out their mobile phone, present them with the necessary documents, and they were good to go. So that was great. Also, Appetito as a company was one of the essential companies. We were in priority group number two in North Rhine-Westphalia. So our employees received the necessary documents which entitled them to get a vaccination quickly. So from the point of view of um, the company, it's of course uh, a great thing if many of our employees are vaccinated, but also for the society in general, of course. So we were able to issue our staff with the necessary documents to allow them to get the jab quickly. So we were able to react quickly, in particular in times of a pandemic. That was wonderful. It uh, really worked well for us. A voluntary uh, choice, of course, I've mentioned that. It's always difficult in Germany to make these things things uh, obligatory or mandatory. No, you, your pay statement um, needs to be archived in Germany. So it's a matter of, uh, I don't know, corporate culture. Do you want to make it mandatory? I could have done that. I could have told the employees four weeks from now we will stop issuing uh, paper printed documents. No, we keep on advertising it. We just hope that this ratio will go up organically. We have... Um, raffles or competitions every once in a while and more and more people will decide in favor of the system, I'm sure. The efficiency gains can be felt. We do not only have the savings that I've mentioned before, 
everywhere we see that our workload has been reduced. Things move faster, more efficiently, and the things we defined as our targets prior to the project have been reached. Of course, reducing the costs, that goes without saying you need less paper, less toner, and less stamps. So what's ahead? What is still in store? We will not lean back and rest on our laurels. We've introduced it now, so it's fine. No, quite the opposite. This is a living and breathing thing. And as I've said before, more and more employees, this is our goal now, more and more employees should adopt this new inbox, uh, should, should vote in favor of the inbox and, and get it. So we need to communicate it accordingly. And it's not only HR, it's also other departments that send out documents to the employees. So as a next step, we will now get on board other departments so that they also send out digital documents via Fox Docs. Apart from that, I'm sure there is a number of documents and files that haven't been digitized yet. They still exist on paper for various reasons. Maybe because for a long time um, they were not in use. Maybe because there are legal requirements that do not allow for digitization. But we will try to get the ratio up to 100%. Because if we use paper, we're not up to date anymore. A little spoiler, we're just now looking into the following question or problem, the signature. The signature we found was oftentimes the only reason left to use paper, a printed document, because somebody needs to sign it. And this is why we're currently looking into options for digital signatures. And I've heard through the grapevine that Develop has a solution in store there for you. <laughs> Fox Docs, now, was that a good idea? You might be wondering, well, we clearly improved our sustainability. The paper alone we saved. If you would pile them up, it would reach the height of a giraffe, and they are pretty tall. So after one year, that's the amount of paper that we saved, and sustainability clearly was enhanced. And then certainly digitization, uh, we talked about that in great detail, process efficiency, I've already mentioned that. There is cost pressure, of course, at every company. There is competitiveness, but we can check off all these boxes. Yes. Yes, completed. Privacy matters, data protection. Yes, all of the servers are located in Germany, so you needn't be worried about any privacy problems or breaches. So the answer is yes, absolutely. It was a great idea. And I can only urge you to look into this solution. It is wonderful. It was really worth it from the point of view of the company and the people alike. I'm running out of time, but let me offer you this. If there's anything I can do for you, get in touch. I'll be happy to discuss this further, explain a bit more what we've done, and um, let's just uh, email. Last but not least, a big thank you to the team here on the ground, um, the people behind the cameras, the tech support. Enjoy the rest of the day, and thank you for bearing with me. Thank you very much. Stay safe.